According to a press release from the Ohio State Athletic Department, a total of 220 student-athletes have participated in a combined 608 name, image, and likeness opportunities for a total compensation value of nearly $3 million since July 1st. Talk about adapting to the times. I think it's only been a year around July 1st of 2021 since then that we've had name, image, and likeness opportunities. In fact, Ohio State ranks number one nationally in plenty of NIL figures. This isn't necessarily a exclusively college football topic, but this relates hugely to college football because we've seen football commits in high school recruits like Keonta Goodwin from Kentucky, for example, choosing to stay with one school because they had greater NIL opportunities. Ohio State fans will also be familiar with this because Quinn Ewers most certainly entered the transfer portal because his NIL deal required him to be starting at a university in a year, or so that's what I've heard. So this is interesting. I think that this is a good sign if you're an Ohio State fan regarding the NIL side of things. Of course, you want to be as adaptive as you can within the sport, and Ryan Day himself has said that he doesn't want to make NIL the sole focus of recruiting. He doesn't want to be the guy who's, he wants to form relationships with players. He doesn't just want to pay them to come here. So you know that you're you're not doing this in the quote-unquote scummy way like other schools are. You're just adapting to the times, which is good. So today I'm going to read two articles just talking about this. I'm going to give my own opinion. As a Michigan fan myself, I have heard rumors from my own school that we are slowly adapting to the times. And while I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of change, I don't necessarily like the idea of all college athletes being paid millions of dollars for some reasons. But it is what it is. I have no control over it. A lot of these guys earn like, they, they've earned their money by playing well. I mean, for example, a guy like C.J. Stroud or Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave, barring injury, they're going to have, I would presume, several years of starting in the National Football League. So they're going to be paid then. In a certain sense, to me, it's like, why not maybe pay him now? I'm kind of just a neutral on that, but enough with my rambling. Let's dive into the first article. It's from Fansided talking about Ohio State taking advantage of NIL rules by Ryan Stano. I'm going to link this article and the other one down below so you all can read them, and I encourage you to. The Ohio State football team, as well as other sports in the athletic department, knew they were going to have to adapt to the new NIL rules. If they didn't, they were simply going to be left behind while other schools used the laws to their advantage. The Buckeyes have not been left behind. In fact, no one has taken advantage of the NIL laws more than Ohio State. And these laws are very, they're very loose. I mean, in, in Texas, you have a straight up fund that gives, I think it's like 50K or some amount of money to be an offensive lineman at Texas. It's not even necessarily a, a deal. It's this the best word to describe it is just this sketchy, straight-up payment of people to go to Texas to be an offensive lineman there. It's just an example of how loose the rules are. They're not really regulated. It's kind of like the wild, wild west. They were the number one program Ohio State was in the country in terms of NIL deals. It's not just the football program. It's every program in the university. Again, nearly 3 million through 608 reported NIL deals. That is is a lot of deals, and it's number one nationally in deals, in athletes that have earned money through deals, and combined income, the three million. It's All of those three figures are number one according to Open Doors. It seems to be quite simple to me, says the writer of this article. If you are a student athlete that wants to take advantage of new NIL laws, you should go to Ohio State. The university is doing an excellent job of helping athletes get the most out of their careers, both on the field and making money. This is a good 
recruiting jewel for Ohio State as it is out there. This doesn't help one specific program. It helps all of them. Anyone who's good at any sport will take a look at the, that number above and see that Ohio State takes care of its athletes, especially if you're a dual sport athlete. I wonder if you could earn, this is kind of a question, if any of you know this, I wonder if you could earn even more money if you're a dual sport athlete. Like JT Tuimalau, I think, plays for the basketball team as well, and he's also playing for the football team. NIL laws are still a little hard to wrap your head around. I honestly don't know a whole lot. I know some, but not a lot. Again, it's very loose, very, it's not completely developed, not in the final stage that I think anyone wants it in. They are different in every state, and there is no set of rules for everyone. The Buckeyes are taking advantage of that right now. This is a huge, huge recruiting tool. It, it, a massive recruiting tool, as if Ohio State hasn't been recruiting well enough already. And did you know that according to like 24-7 sports, you look at the, the talent composite, total talent composite, Ohio State is further ahead in talent. They're further ahead of Michigan by average player ranking than Michigan is ahead of Michigan State. That would have, that would have been a foreign concept a, over a decade ago. It's reality now. Ohio State, and I've made videos about this before, it's kind of common knowledge. They're by far the best recruiting school in the Big Ten. They have the most talent on their football team in the Big Ten. And even in basketball, they've been recruiting well as well. As well. This here, fascinating, amazing recruiting tool to already add to their impressive resume, especially in football. That's the first article, and we'll now read the second one, which does add a little bit more in-depth, I think. It's by Fan Nation. The Buckeyes have also developed a team to help connect student-athletes to additional opportunities. That's what this article adds. Again, it talks about all three figures. It basically spits out the same thing, but here's the interesting part. With the name, image, and likeness landscape continuing to evolve, Ohio State announced it has also updated its guidelines to allow for the creation of an internal advisory team that will help connect student-athletes to additional opportunities. This means that that singular, singular sentence equals more money, more deals, more student-athletes getting paid, more recruits, donors, whoever just wants to be invested in the sport of football, all turning their head to Ohio State and saying, well, maybe I want to put my time and money there. Led by Senior Associate Athletic Director of Sports of Sport Administration and Student Athlete Development, Carrie Hoyt, the NIL Edge team can work directly with brands and companies to assist student athletes in their endeavors, something that was not allowed by the university's original guidelines. Our guidelines were initially created to be restrictive, but now that we have a better understanding of NIL, it's clear that we can provide more assistance in connecting student-athletes with interested brands, Hoyt said in a statement. By allowing some Ohio State staff to interact with the brands and to ed educate and answer questions, we can eliminate hesitancy from brands and donors, bingo, who were concerned about breaking rules. Because like Ryan Day said, I mean, he said this, there was another article, I think I'm going to find it and link it down below, but Ryan Day was basically saying he doesn't want to break the rules, he doesn't want to get involved in the muck and dirt, and other schools have, and I'm not going to name my own opinion on them because there's not really any evidence, but other schools certainly have. Whether we, it's public knowledge or not, athletes have been getting paid by certain schools, and probably every school to a certain extent, for a very long time. But Ohio State, at least on the outside, has publicly stated that they don't want to break the rules at this time. Every state and every institution has its own set of NIL rules. Updating our NIL guidelines at this time is what we needed to do to stay competitive in this ultra-competitive landscape. And that right there, like everything that was said in those two articles, kind of brings me to what would be just like the, my whole point in this video is expecting positive outcomes because this is Ohio State as a university, not just the football team, but 
the football team we already know as being this elite competitive team. And the offseason hirings and firings prove that, the recruiting proves that, the the reaction of the fan base to the Michigan game, despite it kind of being funny to me as a Michigan fan, I, kind of also proves that. They hate losing. That's why they're complaining about our one win. I'm saying this because it's true. You Ohio State fans watching this are really upset by that win because you hate losing. You don't ex- you don't accept losing. A lot of other schools accept a few losses here and there, and they just shrug their shoulders and say, it is what it is. It's like what Michigan fans did in Harbaugh's first few years, even when some of the losses were unacceptable. We just shrugged our shoulders. It's Ryan Day's year three. He goes 11-2, and two, and certain sections of the fan base go berserk. It's because you all are your competitive and your university is certainly competitive and certainly spurred on by that. So this is, if you want to be successful in college, or at least have a better chance to be successful, you have to be adaptive. And you have to investigate in the NIL and at least dip your toes in it and come up with something. Because my school, Michigan, has been very slow with it. I cannot imagine that it's that being slow with it is helping at all on the recruiting trail or helping just the school in general. It certainly speaks to some of the apathy that was in the university when it comes to athletics. Now that Mark Schlissel is gone, is fired, basically, maybe it'll be different, but I don't know. Ohio State is just in a really good position with athletics because of this NIL report. I mean, $3 million for 220 student-athletes is crazy. And, I mean, tell me what you think below. Because I think this is, I mean, this is it. And this is final. You have, you may not like it. You don't have to follow it. I mean, none of us really have to follow it. I mean, we can make decisions. We're not being held at gunpoint to like this. You can disagree with it. But if you're a fan, you have to accept that this is this is it. This is NIL. There's no turning back now. We've opened the jackpot. There may be some restrictions put in place. There'll probably be tighter rules eventually because someone will do something that we all don't like because it gave them an quote-unquote unfair advantage, and we'll use that to create a set of rules with other loopholes. But anyway... What are your guys' thoughts on this? Because that's Ohio State. That's just Ohio State. I haven't even looked at Alabama or Georgia or Texas or Texas A&M schools with like massive boatloads of money. Imagine USC and imagine Miami too. Miami had another insane report of money. These schools, huge recruiting bonuses. And that will also attract coaches who want progress and who want to win. Winning coaches who care mostly about winning, like whether they're like they'll do anything, even be scummy to win, or whether they just want to win, or whether they're just great. Like any kind of coach who just wants to win and can see the future will be attracted to this as well. But that's just my opinion. That's what I see. And that's the end of this video. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. I encourage you to read these articles and also read up and investigate on the NIL yourself just to see if maybe you had some misconceptions about it, whether it turns your opinion into viewing it as more good or than bad or vice versa. Again, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you guys around. Bye.